chapters 1 through 6 of the second book of Samuel from the Young's Literal Translation of the Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. Chapter 1 And it cometh to pass after the death of Saul that David hath returned from smiting the Amalekite, and David dwelleth in Ziklag two days. And it cometh to pass on the third day that, lo, a man hath come in out of the camp from Saul, and his garments are rent, and earth on his head. And it cometh to pass in his coming in unto David that he falleth to the earth and doth obeisance. And David saith to him, Whence comest thou? And he saith unto him, out of the camp of Israel I have escaped. And David saith unto him, What hath been the matter? Declare, I pray thee, to me. And he saith that, The people hath fled from the battle, and also a multitude hath fallen of the people, and they die, and also Saul and Jonathan his son have died. And David saith unto the youth who is declaring it to him, how hast thou known that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? And the youth who is declaring it to him saith, I happened to meet in Mount Gilboa, and lo, Saul is leaning on his spear, and lo, the chariots and those possessing horses have followed him. And he turneth behind him, and seeth me, and calleth unto me, and I say, Here am I. And he saith unto me, Who art thou? And I say unto him, An Amalekite I am. And he saith unto me, Stand, I pray thee, over me, and put me to death. For seized me hath the arrow, for all my soul is still in me. And I stand over him, and put him to death. For I knew that he doth not live after his falling. And I take the crown which is on his head, and the bracelet which is on his arm, and bring them in unto my lord hither. And David taketh hold on his garments, and rendeth them, and also all the men who are with him, and they mourn, and weep, and fast till the evening, for Saul, and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of Jehovah, and for the house of Israel, because they have fallen by the sword. And David saith unto the youth who is declaring it to him, Whence art thou? And he saith, Son of a sojourner, an Amalekite I am. And David saith unto him, <laughs> How wast thou not afraid to put forth thy hand to destroy the anointed of Jehovah? And David calleth to one of the youths, and saith, Draw nigh, fall upon him. And he smiteth him, and he dieth. And David saith unto him, Thy blood is on thine own head, for thy mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I i put to death the anointed of jehovah and david lamenteth with this lamentation over saul and over jonathan his son and he saith to teach the sons of judah the bow lo it is written on the book of the upright the roebuck o israel on thy high places is wounded how have the mighty fallen Declare it not in Gath. Proclaim not the tidings in the streets of Ashkelon, lest they rejoice, the daughters of the Philistines, lest they exult, the daughters of the uncircumcised. Mountains of Gilboa, no dew nor rain be on you, and fields of heave offerings. For there hath become loathsome the shield of the mighty, the shield of Saul, without the anointed with oil. From the blood of the wounded, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan hath not turned backward, and the sword of Saul doth not return empty. Saul and Jonathan, they are loved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they have not been parted. Then eagles they have been lighter, then lions they have been mightier. <laughs> daughters of Israel, for Saul weep ye, 
who is clothing you in scarlet with delights who is lifting up ornaments of gold on your clothing oh how have the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle jonathan on thy high places wounded i am in distress for thee my brother jonathan very pleasant wast thou to me wonderful was thy love to me above the love of women how have the mighty fallen yea the weapons of war perish <laughs> chapter two and it cometh to pass afterwards that david asketh at jehovah saying do i go up into one of the cities of judah and jehovah saith unto him go up and david saith whither do i go up and he saith to hebron and david goeth up thither and also his two wives ahinoam the jezreelitess and abigail wife of nabal the carmelite and his men who are with him hath david brought up a man and his household and they dwell in the cities of hebron and the men of judah come and anoint their david for king over the house of judah and they declare to david saying the men of jabesh gilead are they who buried saul and david sendeth messengers unto the men of jabesh gilead and saith unto them blessed are ye of jehovah in that ye have done this kindness with your lord with saul that ye bury him and now jehovah doth with you kindness and truth and also i do with you this good because ye have done this thing and now are your hands strong and be ye for sons of valor for your lord saul is dead and also me have the house of judah anointed for king over them and abner son of ner head of the host which saul hath hath taken ishbosheth son of saul and causeth him to pass over to mahanaim and causeth him to reign over gilead and over the ashurite and over jezreel and over ephraim and over benjamin and over israel all of it a son of forty years is ishbosheth son of saul in his reigning over israel and two years he hath reigned only the house of judah have been after david and the number of the days that david hath been king in hebron over the house of judah is seven years and six months and abner son of ner goeth out and servants of ishbosheth son of saul from mahanaim to gibeon and joab son of zeruiah and servants of david have gone out and they meet by the pool of gibeon together and sit down these by the pool on this side and these by the pool on that and abner saith unto joab let the youths rise i pray thee and they play before us and joab saith let them rise and they rise and pass over in number twelve of benjamin even of ishbosheth son of saul and twelve of the servants of david and they lay hold each on the head of his companion and his sword is in the side of his companion and they fall together and one calleth that place helkath hazorim which is in gibeon and the battle is very hard on that day and abner is smitten and the men of israel before the servants of david and there are there three sons of zeruiah joab and abishai and asahel and asahel is light on his feet as one of the rows which are in the field and asahel pursueth after abner and hath not turned aside to go to the right or to the left from after abner and abner looketh behind him and saith art thou he asahel and he saith i am and abner saith to him turn thee aside to thy right hand or to thy left and seize for thee one of the youths and take to thee his armour and asahel hath not been willing to turn aside from after him and abner addeth again saying unto asahel turn thee aside from after me why do i smite thee to the earth and how do i lift up my face unto joab thy brother and he refuseth to turn aside and abner smiteth him with the hinder part of the spear unto the fifth rib and the spear cometh out from behind him and he falleth there and dieth under it and it cometh to pass every one who hath come unto the place where asahel hath fallen and dieth 
they stand still and joab and abishai pursue after abner and the sun hath gone in and they have come in unto the height of amah which is on the front of gia the way of the wilderness of gibeon and the sons of benjamin gather themselves together after abner and become one troop and stand on the top of a certain height and abner calleth unto joab and saith for ever doth the sword consume hast thou not known that it is bitterness in the latter end until when dost thou not say to the people to turn back from after their brethren and joab saith god liveth for unless thou hadst spoken surely then from the morning had the people gone up each from after his brother and joab bloweth with a trumpet and all the people stand still and pursue no more after israel nor have they added any more to fight and abner and his men have gone through the plain all that night and pass over the jordan and go on through all bithron and come in to mahanaim and joab hath turned back from after abner and gathereth all the people and there are lacking of the servants of david nineteen men and asahel and the servants of david have smitten of benjamin even among the men of abner three hundred and sixty men they died and they lift up asahel and bury him in the burying place of his father which is in bethlehem and they go all the night joab and his men and it is light to them in hebron chapter three and the war is long between the house of saul and the house of david and david is going on and is strong and the house of saul are going on and are weak and there are born to david sons in hebron and his firstborn is amnon of ahinoam the jezreelitess and his second is chiliab of abigail wife of nabal the carmelite and the third is absalom son of maaca daughter of talmai king of geshur and the fourth is adonijah son of haggith and the fifth is shephatiah son of abital and the sixth is ethriam of eglah wife of david these have been born to david in hebron and it cometh to pass in the war being between the house of saul and the house of david that abner hath been strengthening himself in the house of saul and saul hath a concubine and her name is rizpah daughter of aiah and ishbosheth saith unto abner wherefore hast thou gone in unto the concubine of my father and it is displeasing to abner exceedingly because of the words of ishbosheth and he saith the head of a dog am i that in reference to judah to-day i do kindness with the house of saul thy father unto his brethren and unto his friends and have not delivered thee into the hand of david that thou chargest against me iniquity concerning the woman to-day <sighs> thus doth god to abner and thus he doth add to him surely as jehovah hath sworn to david surely so i do to him to cause the kingdom to pass over from the house of saul and to raise up the throne of david over israel and over judah from dan even unto beersheba and he is not able any more to turn back abner a word because of his fearing him and abner sendeth messengers unto david for himself saying whose is the land saying make thy covenant with me and lo my hand is with thee to bring round unto thee all israel and he saith good i make with thee a covenant only one thing i am asking of thee that is thou dost not see my face except thou dost first bring in michal daughter of saul in thy coming in to see my face and david sendeth messengers unto ishbosheth son of saul saying give up my wife michal whom i betrothed to myself with a hundred foreskins of the philistines and ishbosheth sendeth and taketh her from a man from faltiel son of laish and her husband goeth with her going on and weeping behind her unto bahurim and abner saith unto him go turn back and he turneth back and the word of abner was with the elders of israel saying heretofore ye have been seeking david for king over you and now do it for jehovah hath spoken of david saying by the hand of david my servant to save my people israel out of the hand of the philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies and abner speaketh also in the ears of benjamin and abner goeth also to speak in the ears of david in hebron all that is good in the eyes of israel and in the eyes of all the house of benjamin 
and abner cometh in unto david to hebron and with him twenty men and david maketh for abner and for the men who are with him a banquet and abner saith unto david i arise and go and gather unto my lord the king the whole of israel and they make with thee a covenant and thou hast reigned over all that thy soul desireth and david sendeth away abner and he goeth in peace and lo the servants of david and joab have come from the troop and much spoil have brought with them and abner is not with david in hebron for he hath sent him away and he goeth in peace and joab and all the host that is with him have come and they declare to joab saying abner son of ner hath come unto the king and he sendeth him away and he goeth in peace and joab cometh unto the king and saith what hast thou done lo abner hath come unto thee why is this thou hast sent him away and he is really gone thou hast known abner son of ner that to deceive thee he came and to know thy going out and thy coming in and to know all that thou art doing and joab goeth out from david and sendeth messengers after abner and they bring him back from the well of sirah and david knew not and abner turneth back to hebron and joab turneth him aside unto the midst of the gate to speak with him quietly and smiteth him there in the fifth rib and he dieth for the blood of asahel his brother and david heareth afterwards and saith acquitted am i and my kingdom by jehovah unto the age from the blood of abner son of ner it doth stay on the head of joab and on all the house of his father and there is not cut off from the house of joab one having an issue and leprous and laying hold on a staff and falling by a sword and lacking bread and joab and abishai his brother slew abner because that he put to death asahel their brother in gibeon in battle and david saith unto joab and unto all the people who are with him rend your garments and gird on sackcloth and mourn before abner and king david is going after the bier and they bury abner in hebron and the king lifteth up his voice and weepeth at the grave of abner and all the people weep and the king lamenteth for abner and saith as the death of a fool doth abner die thy hands not bound and thy feet to fetters not brought nigh as when falling before sons of evil thou hast fallen and all the people add to weep over him and all the people come to cause david to eat bread while yet day and david sweareth saying thus doth god to me and thus he doth add for before the going in of the sun i taste no bread or any other thing and all the people have discerned it and it is good in their eyes as all that the king hath done is good in the eyes of all the people and all the people know even all israel in that day that it hath not been from the king to put to death abner son of ner and the king saith unto his servants do ye not know that a prince and a great one hath fallen this day in israel and i to-day am tender and an anointed king and these men sons of zeruiah are too hard for me jehovah doth recompense to the doer of the evil according to his evil chapter four and the son of saul heareth that abner is dead in hebron and his hands are feeble and all israel have been troubled and two men heads of troops have been to the son of saul the name of the one is baana and the name of the second rechab sons of remon the beerothite of the sons of benjamin for also beeroth is reckoned to benjamin and the beerothites flee to gitaim and are there sojourners unto this day and to jonathan son of saul is a son lame he was a son of five years at the coming in of the rumour of the death of saul and jonathan out of jezreel and his nurse lifteth him up and fleeth and it cometh to pass in her hasting to flee that he falleth and becometh lame and his name is mephibosheth and the sons of rimmon the beerothite rechab and baana go and come in at the heat of the day unto the house of ishbosheth and he is lying down the lying down of noon 
and thither they have come unto the midst of the house taking wheat and they smite him unto the fifth rib and rechab and baana his brother have escaped yea they come in to the house and he is lying on his bed in the inner part of his bedchamber and they smite him and put him to death and turn aside his head and they take his head and go the way of the plain all the night and bring in the head of ishbosheth unto david in hebron and say unto the king lo the head of ishbosheth son of saul thine enemy who sought thy life and jehovah doth give to my lord the king vengeance this day of saul and of his seed and david answereth rechab and baana his brother sons of remon the beerathite and saith to them jehovah liveth who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity when one is declaring to me saying lo saul is dead and he was as a bearer of tidings in his own eyes then i take hold on him and slay him in ziklag instead of my giving to him for the tidings also when wicked men have slain the righteous man in his own house on his bed and now do not i require his blood of your hand and have taken you away from the earth and david commandeth the young men and they slay them and cut off their hands and their feet and hang them over the pool in hebron and the head of ishbosheth they have taken and bury it in the burying place of abner in hebron chapter five and all the tribes of israel came unto david to hebron and speak saying lo we are thy bone and thy flesh also heretofore in saul's being king over us thou hast been he who is bringing out and bringing in israel and jehovah saith to thee thou dost feed my people israel and thou art for leader over israel and all the elders of israel came unto the king to hebron and king david maketh with them a covenant in hebron before jehovah and they anoint david for king over israel a son of thirty years is david in his being king forty years he hath reigned in hebron he reigned over judah seven years and six months and in jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all israel and judah and the king goeth and his men to jerusalem unto the jebusite the inhabitant of the land and they speak to david saying thou dost not come in hither except thou turn aside the blind and the lame saying david doth not come in hither and david captureth the fortress of zion it is the city of david and david saith on that day any one smiting the jebusite let him go up by the watercourse and the lame and the blind the hated of david's soul because the blind and lame say he doth not come into the house and david dwelleth in the fortress and calleth it city of david and david buildeth round about from millo and inward and david goeth going on and becoming great and jehovah god of hosts is with him and hiram king of tyre sendeth messengers unto david and cedar trees and artificers of wood and artificers of stone for walls and they build a house for david and david knoweth that jehovah hath established him for king over israel and that he hath lifted up his kingdom because of his people israel and david taketh again concubines and wives out of jerusalem after his coming from hebron and there are born again to david sons and daughters and these are the names of those born to him in jerusalem shamua and shobab and nathan and solomon and ibhar and elishua and nepheg and japhia and elishema and eliada and elaphalet and the philistines hear that they have anointed david for king over israel and all the philistines come up to seek david and david heareth and goeth down unto the fortress and the philistines have come and are spread out in the valley of rephaim and david asketh of jehovah saying do i go up unto the philistines dost thou give them into my hand and jehovah saith unto david go up for i certainly give the philistines into thy hand and david cometh in to baal parazim and david smiteth them there and saith 
jehovah hath broken forth on mine enemies before me as the breaking forth of waters therefore he hath called the name of that place baal parazim and they forsake there their idols and david and his men lift them up and the philistines add again to come up and are spread out in the valley of rephaim and david asketh of jehovah and he saith thou dost not go up turn round unto their rear and thou hast come to them over against the mulberries and it cometh to pass in thy hearing the sound of a stepping in the tops of the mulberries then thou dost move sharply for then hath jehovah gone out before thee to smite in the camp of the philistines and david doth so as jehovah commanded him and smiteth the philistines from geba unto thy coming to gazer chapter six and david gathered again every chosen one in israel thirty thousand and david riseth and goeth and all the people who are with him from baale judah to bring up thence the ark of god whose name hath been called the name of jehovah of hosts inhabiting the cherubs upon it and they caused the ark of god to ride on a new cart and lift it up from the house of abinadab which is in the height and Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, are leading the new cart. And they lift it up from the house of Abinadab, which is in the height, with the ark of God, and Ahio is going before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel are playing before Jehovah, with all kinds of instruments of firwood, even with harps, and with psalteries, and with timbrels, and with cornets, and with cymbals. And they come unto the threshing-floor of Nacon, and Uzzah putteth forth his hand unto the ark of God, and layeth hold on it, for they released the oxen. And the anger of Jehovah burneth against Uzzah, and God smiteth him there for the error, and he dieth there by the ark of God. And it is displeasing to David, because that Jehovah hath broken forth a breach upon Uzzah, and one calleth that place Perez Uzzah unto this day. And David feareth Jehovah on that day, and saith, <gasps> how doth the ark of jehovah come in unto me and david hath not been willing to turn aside unto himself the ark of jehovah to the city of david and david turneth it aside to the house of obed edom the gittite and the ark of jehovah doth inhabit the house of obed edom the gittite three months and jehovah blesseth obed edom and all his house and it is declared to king david saying jehovah hath blessed the house of obed edom and all that he hath because of the ark of god and david goeth and bringeth up the ark of god from the house of obed edom to the city of david with joy and it cometh to pass when those bearing the ark of jehovah have stepped six steps that he sacrificeth an ox and a fatling and david is dancing with all strength before jehovah and david is girded with a linen ephod and david and all the house of israel are bringing up the ark of jehovah with shouting and with the voice of a trumpet and it hath come to pass the ark of jehovah hath come in to the city of david and michal daughter of saul hath looked through the window and seeth king david moving and dancing before jehovah and despiseth him in her heart and they bring in the ark of jehovah and set it up in its place in the midst of the tent which david hath spread out for it and david causeth to ascend burnt offerings before jehovah and peace offerings and david finisheth from causing to ascend the burnt offering and the peace offerings and blesseth the people in the name of jehovah of hosts and he apportioneth to all the people to all the multitude of israel from man even unto woman to each one cake of bread and one eshpar and one ashisha and all the people go each to his house and david turneth back to bless his house and michal daughter of saul goeth out to meet david and saith how honourable to-day was the king of israel who was uncovered to-day before the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain ones is openly uncovered and david saith unto michal before jehovah who fixed on me above thy father and above all his house to appoint me leader over the people of jehovah and over israel yea i played before jehovah and i have been more vile than this and have been low in mine eyes and with the handmaids whom thou hast spoken of with them i am honoured 
as to michal daughter of saul she had no child till the day of her death the end of chapters one through six recording by mark penfold chapters seven through twelve of the second book of samuel from the young's literal translation this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter seven and it cometh to pass when the king sat in his house and jehovah hath given rest to him round about from all his enemies that the king saith unto nathan the prophet see i pray thee i am dwelling in a house of cedars and the ark of god is dwelling in the midst of the curtain and nathan saith unto the king all that is in thine heart go do for jehovah is with thee and it cometh to pass in that night that the word of jehovah is unto nathan saying go and thou hast said unto my servant unto david thus said jehovah dost thou build for me a house for my dwelling in for i have not dwelt in a house even from the day of my bringing up the sons of israel out of egypt even unto this day and am walking up and down in a tent and in a tabernacle during all the time that i have walked up and down among all the sons of israel a word have i spoken with one of the tribes of israel which i commanded to feed my people israel saying why have ye not built to me a house of cedars and now thus dost thou say to my servant to david thus said jehovah of hosts i have taken thee from the comely place from after the flock to be leader over my people over israel and i am with thee whithersoever thou hast gone and i cut off all thine enemies from thy presence and have made for thee a great name as the name of the great ones who are in the earth and i have appointed a place for my people for israel and have planted it and it hath tabernacled in its place and it is not troubled any more and the sons of perverseness do not add to afflict it any more as in the beginning even from the day that i appointed judges over my people israel and i have given rest to thee from all thine enemies and jehovah hath declared to thee that jehovah doth make for thee a house when thy days are full and thou hast lain with thy fathers then i have raised up thy seed after thee which goeth out from thy bowels and have established his kingdom he doth build a house for my name and i have established the throne of his kingdom unto the age i am to him for a father and he is to me for a son whom in his dealings perversely i have even reproved with a rod of men and with strokes of the sons of adam and my kindness doth not turn aside from him as i turned it aside from saul whom i turned aside from before thee and steadfast is thy house and thy kingdom unto the age before thee thy throne is established unto the age according to all these words and according to all this vision so spake nathan unto david and king david cometh in and sitteth before jehovah and saith who am i lord jehovah and what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto and yet this is little in thine eyes lord jehovah and thou dost speak also concerning the house of thy servant afar off and this is the law of the man lord jehovah and what doth david add more to speak unto thee and thou thou hast known thy servant lord jehovah because of thy word and according to thy heart thou hast done all this greatness to cause thy servant to know it therefore thou hast been great jehovah god for there is none like thee and there is no god save thee according to all that we have heard with our ears and who is as thy people as israel one nation in the earth whom god hath gone to redeem to him for a people and to make for him a name and to do for you the greatness even fearful things for thy land at the presence of thy people whom thou hast redeemed to thee out of egypt among the nations and their gods yea thou dost establish to thee thy people israel to thee for a people unto the age and thou jehovah hast been to them for god and now jehovah god 
the word which thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house establish unto the age and do as thou hast spoken and thy name is great unto the age saying jehovah of hosts is god over israel and the house of thy servant david is established before thee for thou jehovah of hosts god of israel thou hast uncovered the ear of thy servant saying a house i build for thee therefore hath thy servant found his heart to pray unto thee this prayer and now lord jehovah thou art god himself and thy words are truth and thou speakest unto thy servant this goodness and now begin and bless the house of thy servant to be unto the age before thee for thou lord jehovah hast spoken and by thy blessing is the house of thy servant blessed to the age chapter eight and it cometh to pass afterwards that david smiteth the philistines and humbleth them and david taketh the bridle of the metropolis out of the hand of the philistines and he smiteth moab and measureth them with a line causing them to lie down on the earth and he measureth two lines to put to death and the fullness of the line to keep alive and the moabites are to david for servants bearers of a present and david smiteth hadadezer son of rehob king of zobah in his going to bring back his power by the river euphrates and david captureth from him a thousand and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen and david destroyeth utterly the whole of the charioteers only he leaveth of them a hundred charioteers and aram of damascus cometh to give help to hadadezer king of zobah and david smiteth of aram twenty and two thousand men and david putteth garrisons in aram of damascus and aram is to david for a servant bearing a present and jehovah saveth david whithersoever he hath gone and david taketh the shields of gold which were on the servants of hadadezer and bringeth them to jerusalem and from betah and from barophi cities of hadadezer hath king david taken very much brass and toy king of hamath heareth that david hath smitten all the force of hadadezer and toy sendeth joram his son unto king david to ask of him of welfare and to bless him because that he hath fought against hadadezer and smiteth him for a man of wars with toy had hadadezer been and in his hand have been vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass also them did king david sanctify to jehovah with the silver and the gold which he sanctified of all the nations which he subdued of aram and of moab and of the benai ammon and of the philistines and of amalek and of the spoil of hadadezer son of rehob king of zobah and david maketh a name in his turning back from his smiting aram in the valley of salt eighteen thousand and he putteth in edom garrisons in all edom he hath put garrisons and all edom are servants to david and jehovah saveth david whithersoever he hath gone and david reigneth over all israel and david is doing judgment and righteousness to all his people and joab son of zeruiah is over the host and jehoshaphat son of ahilud is remembrancer and zadok son of ahitub and amalek son of abiathar are priests and seraiah is scribe and benaiah son of jehoiada is over both the carathite and the pelathite and the sons of david have been ministers chapter nine and david saith is there yet any left to the house of saul and i do with him kindness because of jonathan and the house of saul hath a servant and his name is ziba and they call for him unto david and the king saith unto him art thou ziba and he saith thy servant and the king saith is there not yet a man to the house of saul and i do with him the kindness of god and ziba saith unto the king jonathan hath yet a son lame and the king saith to him where is he and ziba saith unto the king lo he is in the house of machir son of amiel in lodibar and king david sendeth and taketh him out of the house of machir son of amiel of lodibar and mephibosheth son of jonathan son of saul cometh unto david and falleth on his face and doth obeisance 
and david saith mephibosheth and he saith lo uh, thy servant and david saith to him be not afraid for i certainly do with thee kindness because of jonathan thy father and have given back to thee all the field of saul thy father and thou dost eat bread at my table continually and he boweth himself and saith what is thy servant that thou hast turned unto the dead dog such as i and the king calleth unto ziba servant of saul and saith unto him all that was to saul and to all his house i have given to the son of thy lord and thou hast served for him the land thou and thy sons and thy servants and hast brought in and there hath been to the son of thy lord bread and he hath eaten it and mephibosheth son of thy lord doth eat continually bread at my table and ziba hath fifteen sons and twenty servants and ziba saith unto the king according to all that my lord the king commandeth his servant so doth thy servant as to mephibosheth he is eating at my table saith the king as one of the sons of the king and mephibosheth hath a young son and his name is micah and every one dwelling in the house of ziba are servants to mephibosheth and mephibosheth is dwelling in jerusalem for at the table of the king he is eating continually and he is lame of his two feet chapter ten and it cometh to pass afterwards that the king of the beni ammon dieth and hanun his son reigneth in his stead and david saith i do kindness with hanun son of nahash as his father did with me kindness and david sendeth to comfort him by the hand of his servants concerning his father and the servants of david come into the land of the beni ammon and the heads of the beni ammon say unto hanun their lord is david honouring thy father in thine eyes because he hath sent to thee comforters for to search the city and to spy it and to overthrow it hath not david sent his servants unto thee and hanun taketh the servants of david and shaveth off the half of their beard and cutteth off their long robes in the midst unto their buttocks and sendeth them away and they declare it to david and he sendeth to meet them for the men have been greatly ashamed and the king saith abide in jericho till your beard doth spring up then ye have returned and the beni ammon see that they have been abhorred by david and the beni ammon send and hire aram of bethrehob and aram of zobah twenty thousand footmen and the king of maaca with a thousand men and ishtob with twelve thousand men and david heareth and sendeth joab and all the host the mighty men and the beni ammon come out and set battle in array at the opening of the gate and aram of zobah and rehob and ishtob and maaca are by themselves in the field and joab seeth that the front of the battle hath been unto him before and behind and he chooseth of all the chosen in israel and setteth in array to meet aram and the rest of the people he hath given into the hand of abishai his brother and setteth in array to meet the beni ammon and he saith if aram be stronger than i then thou hast been to me for salvation and if the beni ammon be stronger than thou then i have come to give salvation to thee be strong and strengthen thyself for our people and for the cities of our god and jehovah doth that which is good in his eyes and joab draweth nigh and the people who are with him to battle against aram and they flee from his presence and the beni ammon have seen that aram hath fled and they flee from the presence of abishai and go into the city and joab turneth back from the beni ammon and cometh in unto jerusalem and aram seeth that it is smitten before israel and they are gathered together and hadadezer sendeth and bringeth out aram which is beyond the river and they come into helam and shobak head of the host of hadadezer is before them and it is declared to david and he gathereth all israel and passeth over the jordan and cometh into helam and aram setteth itself in array to meet david and they fight with him 
and aram fleeth from the presence of israel and david slayeth of aram seven hundred charioteers and forty thousand horsemen and shobak head of its host he hath smitten and he dieth there and all the kings servants of hadadezer see that they have been smitten before israel and make peace with israel and serve them and aram is afraid to help any more the benai ammon chapter eleven and it cometh to pass at the revolution of the year at the time of the going out of the messengers that david sendeth joab and his servants with him and all israel and they destroy the benai ammon and lay siege against rabbah and david is dwelling in jerusalem and it cometh to pass at evening time that david riseth from off his couch and walketh up and down on the roof of the king's house and seeth from the roof a woman bathing and the woman is of very good appearance and david sendeth and inquireth about the woman and saith is not this bathsheba daughter of eliam wife of uriah the hittite and david sendeth messengers and taketh her and she cometh unto him and he lieth with her and she is purifying herself from her uncleanness and she turneth back unto her house and the woman conceiveth and sendeth and declareth to david and saith i am conceiving and david sendeth unto joab send unto me uriah the hittite and joab sendeth uriah unto david and uriah cometh unto him and david asketh of the prosperity of joab and of the prosperity of the people and of the prosperity of the war and david saith to uriah go down to thy house and wash thy feet and uriah goeth out of the king's house and there goeth out after him a gift from the king and uriah lieth down at the opening of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and hath not gone down unto his house and they declare to david saying uriah hath not gone down unto his house and david saith unto uriah hast thou not come from a journey wherefore hast thou not gone down unto thy house and uriah saith unto david the ark and israel and judah are abiding in booths and my lord joab and the servants of my lord on the face of the field are encamping and i i go in unto my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife thy life and the life of thy soul if i do this thing and david saith unto uriah abide in this place also to-day and to-morrow i send thee away and uriah abideth in jerusalem on that day and on the morrow and david calleth for him and he eateth before him and drinketh and he causeth him to drink and he goeth out in the evening to lie on his couch with the servants of his lord and unto his house he hath not gone down and it cometh to pass in the morning that david writeth a letter unto joab and sendeth by the hand of uriah and he writeth in the letter saying place ye uriah over against the front of the severest battle and ye have turned back from after him and he hath been smitten and hath died and it cometh to pass in joab's watching of the city that he appointeth uriah unto the place where he knew that valiant men are and the men of the city go out and fight with joab and there fall some of the people of the servants of david and there dieth also uriah the hittite and joab sendeth and declareth to david all the matters of the war and commandeth the messenger saying at thy finishing all the matters of the war to speak unto the king then it hath been if the king's fury ascend and he hath said to thee wherefore did ye draw nigh unto the city to fight did ye not know that they shoot from off the wall who smiteth abimelech son of jerubasheth do not a woman cast on him a piece of a rider from the wall and he dieth in thebes why drew ye nigh unto the wall that thou hast said also thy servant uriah the hittite is dead and the messenger goeth and cometh in and declareth to david all that with which joab sent him and the messenger saith unto david surely the men have been mighty against us and come out unto us into the field and we are upon them unto the opening of the gate and those shooting shoot at thy servants from off the wall and some of the servants of the king are dead and also thy servant uriah the hittite is dead and david saith unto the messenger thus dost thou say unto joab 
let not this thing be evil in thine eyes for thus and thus doth the sword devour strengthen thy warfare against the city and throw it down and strengthen thou him and the wife of uriah heareth that uriah her husband is dead and lamenteth for her lord and the morning passeth by and david sendeth and gathereth her unto his house and she is to him for a wife and beareth to him a son and the thing which david hath done is evil in the eyes of jehovah chapter twelve and jehovah sendeth nathan unto david and he cometh unto him and saith to him two men have been in one city one rich and one poor the rich hath flocks and herds very many and the poor one hath nothing except one little ewe lamb which he hath bought and keepeth alive and it groweth up with him and with his sons together of his morsel it eateth and from his cup it drinketh and in his bosom it lieth and it is to him as a daughter and there cometh a traveller to the rich man and he spareth to take of his own flock and of his own herd to prepare for the traveller who hath come to him and he taketh the ewe lamb of the poor man and prepareth it for the man who hath come unto him and the anger of david burneth against the man exceedingly and he saith unto nathan jehovah liveth surely a son of death is the man who is doing this and the ewe lamb he doth repay fourfold because that he hath done this thing and because that he hath no pity and nathan saith unto david thou art the man thus said jehovah god of israel i anointed thee for king over israel and i delivered thee out of the hand of saul and i give to thee the house of thy lord and the wives of thy lord into thy bosom and i give to thee the house of israel and of judah and if little then i add to thee such and such things wherefore hast thou despised the word of jehovah to do the evil thing in his eyes uriah the hittite thou hast smitten by the sword and his wife thou hast taken to thee for a wife and him thou hast slain by the sword of the benai ammon and now the sword doth not turn aside from thy house unto the age because thou hast despised me and dost take the wife of uriah the hittite to be to thee for a wife thus said jehovah lo i am raising up against thee evil out of thy house and have taken thy wives before thine eyes and given to thy neighbour and he hath lain with thy wives before the eyes of this son for thou hast done it in secret and i do this thing before all israel and before the sun and david saith unto nathan <gasps> i have sinned against jehovah and nathan saith unto david also jehovah hath caused thy sin to pass away thou dost not die only because thou hast caused the enemies of jehovah greatly to despise by this thing also the son who is born to thee doth surely die and nathan goeth unto his house and jehovah smiteth the lad whom the wife of uriah hath borne to david and it is incurable and david seeketh god for the youth and david keepeth a fast and hath gone in and lodged and lain on the earth and the elders of his house rise against him to raise him up from the earth and he hath not been willing nor hath he eaten with them bread and it cometh to pass on the seventh day that the lad dieth and the servants of david fear to declare to him that the lad is dead for they said lo in the lad being alive we spake unto him and he did not hearken to our voice and how do we say unto him the lad is dead then he hath done evil and david seeth that his servants are whispering and david understandeth that the lad is dead and david saith unto his servants is the lad dead and they say dead and david riseth from the earth and doth bathe and anoint himself and change his raiment and cometh into the house of jehovah and boweth himself and cometh unto his house and asketh and they place for him bread and he eateth and his servants say unto him what is this thing thou hast done because of the living lad thou hast fasted and dost weep and when the lad is dead thou hast risen and dost eat bread and he saith while the lad is alive i have fasted and weep for i said who knoweth jehovah doth pity me and the lad hath lived 
and now he hath died. Why is this I fast? Am I able to bring him back again? I am going unto him, and he doth not turn back unto me. And David comforteth Bathsheba his wife, and goeth in unto her, and lieth with her. And she beareth a son, and he calleth his name Solomon. And Jehovah hath loved him, and sendeth by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and calleth his name Jedidiah, because of Jehovah. And Joab fighteth against Rabbah of the Bene Ammon, and captureth the royal city. And Joab sendeth messengers unto David, and saith, I have fought against Rabbah, also I have captured the city of waters, and now gather the rest of the people, and encamp against the city, and capture it, lest I capture the city, and my name hath been called upon it. And David gathereth all the people, and goeth to Rabbah, and fighteth against it, and captureth it. And he taketh the crown of their king from off his head, and its weight is a talent of gold, and precious stones, and it is on the head of David, and the spoil of the city he hath brought out, very much, and the people who are in it he hath brought out, and setteth to the saw, and to cutting instruments of iron, and to axes of iron, and hath caused them to pass over into the brick kiln. And so he doth to all the cities of the Benai Ammon, and David turneth back, and all the people, to Jerusalem. The End of Chapters 7-12 through 12. Recording by Mark Penfold Chapters 13 through 18 of the Second Book of Samuel from the Young's Literal Translation. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. Chapter 13 And it cometh to pass afterwards that Absalom, son of David, hath a fair sister, and her name is Tamar, and Amnon, son of David, loveth her. And Amnon hath distress, even to become sick because of Tamar his sister, for she is a virgin, and it is hard in the eyes of Amnon to do anything to her. And Amnon hath a friend, and his name is Jonadab, son of Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab is a very wise man, and saith to him, Wherefore art thou thus lean, O king's son, morning by morning? Dost thou not declare to me? And Amnon saith to him, Tamar, sister of Absalom, my brother, I am loving. And Jonadab saith to him, Lie down on thy couch, and feign thyself sick, and thy father hath come in to see thee, and thou hast said unto him, Let I pray thee, Tamar, my sister, come in, and give me bread to eat, and she hath made the food before mine eyes, so that I see it, and have eaten from her hand. <laughs> and Amnon lieth down, and feigneth himself sick, and the king cometh in to see him, and Amnon saith unto the king, Let I pray thee, Tamar my sister come, and she maketh before mine eyes two cakes, and I eat from her hand. And David sendeth unto Tamar to the house, saying, Go, I pray thee, to the house of Amnon thy brother, and make for him food. And Tamar goeth to the house of Amnon her brother, and he is lying down, and she taketh the dough, and kneadeth, and maketh cakes before his eyes, and cooketh the cakes, and taketh the frying-pan, and poureth out before him, and he refuseth to eat. And Amnon saith, Take ye out every one from me. And they go out every one from him. And Amnon saith unto Tamar, Bring the food into the inner chamber, and I eat from thy hand. And Tamar taketh the cakes that she hath made, and bringeth in to Amnon her brother, into the inner chamber. And she bringeth nigh unto him to eat, and he layeth hold on her, and saith to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she saith to him, Nay, my brother, do not humble me, for it is not done so in Israel. Do not this folly. And I, whither do I cause my reproach to go? And thou, thou art as one of the fools in Israel. And now... Speak, I pray thee, unto the king, for he doth not withhold me from thee. And he hath not been willing to hearken to her voice, and is stronger than she, and humbleth her, and lieth with her. And Amnon hateth her, a very great hatred. That greater is the hatred with which he hath hated her, than the love with which he loved her. And Amnon saith to her, Rise, go. 
and she saith to him because of the circumstances this evil is greater than the other that thou hast done with me to send me away and he hath not been willing to hearken to her and calleth his young man his servant and saith send away i pray thee this one from me without and bolt the door after her and upon her is a long coat for such upper robes do daughters of the king who are virgins put on and his servant taketh her out without and hath bolted the door after her and tamar taketh ashes for her head and the long coat that is on her she hath rent and putteth her hand on her head and goeth going on and crying and absalom her brother saith unto her hath amnon thy brother been with thee and now my sister keep silent he is thy brother set not thy heart to this thing and tamar dwelleth but desolate in the house of absalom her brother and king david hath heard all these things and it is very displeasing to him and absalom hath not spoken with amnon either evil or good for absalom is hating amnon because that he humbled tamar his sister and it cometh to pass after two years of days that absalom hath shearers in baal hazor which is with ephraim and absalom calleth for all the sons of the king and absalom cometh unto the king and saith lo i pray thee thy servant hath shearers let the king go i pray thee and his servants with thy servant and the king saith unto absalom nay my son let us not all go i pray thee and we are not too heavy on thee and he presseth on him and he hath not been willing to go and he blesseth him and absalom saith if not let i pray thee amnon my brother go with us and the king saith to him why doth he go with thee and absalom urgeth on him and he sendeth with him amnon and all the sons of the king and absalom commandeth his young men saying see i pray thee when the heart of amnon is glad with wine and i have said unto you smite amnon that ye have put him to death fear not is it not because i have commanded you be strong yea become sons of valour and the young men of absalom do to amnon as absalom commanded and rise do all the sons of the king and they ride each on his mule and flee and it cometh to pass they are in the way and the report hath come unto david saying absalom hath smitten all the sons of the king and there is not left of them one and the king riseth and rendeth his garments and lieth on the earth and all his servants are standing by with rent garments and jonadab son of shemaiah david's brother answereth and saith oh, let not my lord say the whole of the young men the sons of the king they have put to death for amnon alone is dead for by the command of absalom it hath been appointed from the day of his humbling tamar his sister and now let not my lord the king lay unto his heart the word saying all the sons of the king have died for amnon alone is dead and absalom fleeth and the young man who is watching lifteth up his eyes and looketh and lo much people are coming by the way behind him on the side of the hill and jonadab saith unto the king lo the sons of the king have come as the word of thy servant so it hath been and it cometh to pass at his finishing to speak that lo the sons of the king have come and they lift up their voice and weep and also the king and all his servants have wept a very great weeping and absalom hath fled and goeth unto talmai son of amihud king of geshur and david mourneth for his son all the days and absalom hath fled and goeth to geshur and is there three years and the soul of king david determineth to go out unto absalom for he hath been comforted for amnon for he is dead chapter fourteen and joab son of zeruiah knoweth that the heart of the king is on absalom and joab sendeth to tekoah and taketh thence a wise woman and saith unto her feign thyself a mourner i pray thee and put on i pray thee garments of mourning and anoint not thyself with oil and thou hast been as a woman these many days mourning for the dead and thou hast gone unto the king and spoken unto him according to this word and joab putteth the words into her mouth and the woman of tekoa speaketh unto the king and falleth on her face to the earth and doth obeisance and saith save o king 
and the king saith to her what to thee and she saith truly a widow woman am i and my husband dieth and thy maidservant hath two sons and they strive both of them in a field and there is no deliverer between them and the one smiteth the other and putteth him to death and lo the whole family hath risen against thy maidservant and say give up him who smiteth his brother and we put him to death for the life of his brother whom he hath slain and we destroy also the heir and they have quenched my coal which is left so as not to set to my husband a name and remnant on the face of the ground and the king saith unto the woman go to thine house and i give charge concerning thee and the woman of tekoa saith unto the king on me my lord o king is the iniquity and on the house of thy father and the king at his throne are innocent and the king saith he who speaketh aught unto thee and thou hast brought him unto me then he doth not add any more to come against thee and she saith let i pray thee the king remember by jehovah thy god that the redeemer of blood add not to destroy and they destroy not my son and he saith jehovah liveth if there doth fall of the hair of thy son to the earth and the woman saith let i pray thee thy maidservant speak unto my lord the king a word and he saith speak and the woman saith and why hast thou thought thus concerning the people of god yea the king is speaking this thing as a guilty one in that the king hath not brought back his outcast for we do surely die and are as water which is running down to the earth which is not gathered and god doth not accept a person and hath devised devices in that the outcast is not outcast by him and now that i have come to speak unto the king my lord this word it is because the people made me afraid and thy maidservant saith let me speak i pray thee unto the king it may be the king doth do the word of his handmaid for the king doth hearken to deliver his handmaid out of the paw of the man seeking to destroy me and my son together out of the inheritance of god and thy maidservant saith let i pray thee the word of my lord the king be for ease for as a messenger of god so is my lord the king to understand the good and the evil and jehovah thy god is with thee and the king answereth and saith unto the woman do not i pray thee hide from me the thing that i am asking thee and the woman saith let i pray thee my lord the king speak and the king saith is the hand of joab with thee in all this and the woman answereth and saith thy soul liveth my lord o king none doth turn to the right or to the left from all that my lord the king hath spoken for thy servant joab he commanded me and he put in the mouth of thy maidservant all these words in order to bring round the appearance of the thing hath thy servant joab done this thing and my lord is wise according to the wisdom of a messenger of god to know all that is in the land and the king saith unto joab lo i pray thee thou hast done this thing and go bring back the young man absalom and joab falleth on his face to the earth and doth obeisance and blesseth the king and joab saith to-day hath thy servant known that i have found grace in thine eyes my lord o king in that the king hath done the word of his servant and joab riseth and goeth to geshur and bringeth in absalom to jerusalem and the king saith let him turn round unto his house and my face he doth not see and absalom turneth round unto his house and the face of the king he hath not seen and like absalom there was no man so fair in all israel to praise greatly from the sole of his foot even unto his crown there was no blemish in him and in his pulling his head and it hath been at the end of year by year that he pulleth it for it is heavy on him and he hath pulled it he hath even weighed out the hair of his head two hundred shekels by the king's weight and there are born to absalom three sons and one daughter and her name is tamar she was a woman of a fair appearance and absalom dwelleth in jerusalem two years of days 
and the face of the king he hath not seen and absalom sendeth unto joab to send him unto the king and he hath not been willing to come unto him and he sendeth again a second time and he hath not been willing to come and he saith unto his servants see the portion of joab is by the side of mine and he hath barley there go and burn it with fire and the servants of absalom burn the portion with fire and joab riseth and cometh unto absalom in the house and saith unto him why have thy servants burned the portion that i have with fire and absalom saith unto joab lo i sent unto thee saying come hither and i send thee unto the king to say why have i come in from geshur good for me while i am there and now let me see the king's face and if there is in me iniquity then thou hast put me to death and joab cometh unto the king and declareth it to him and he calleth unto absalom and he cometh unto the king and boweth himself to him on his face to the earth before the king and the king giveth a kiss to absalom chapter fifteen and it cometh to pass afterwards that absalom prepareth for himself a chariot and horses and fifty men are running before him and absalom hath risen early and stood by the side of the way of the gate and it cometh to pass every man who hath a pleading to come unto the king for judgment that absalom calleth unto him and saith of what city art thou and he saith of one of the tribes of israel is thy servant and absalom saith unto him see thy matters are good and straightforward and there is none hearkening to thee from the king and absalom saith who doth make me a judge in the land that unto me doth come every man who hath a plea and judgment then i have declared him righteous and it hath come to pass in the drawing nearing of any one to bow himself to him that he hath put forth his hand and laid hold on him and given a kiss to him and absalom doth according to this thing to all israel who come in for judgment unto the king and absalom stealeth the heart of the men of israel and it cometh to pass at the end of forty years that absalom saith unto the king let me go i pray thee and i complete my vow that i vowed to jehovah in hebron for a vow hath thy servant vowed in my dwelling in geshur in aram saying if jehovah doth certainly bring me back to jerusalem then i have served jehovah and the king saith to him go in peace and he riseth and goeth to hebron and absalom sendeth spies through all the tribes of israel saying at your hearing the voice of the trumpet then ye have said absalom hath reigned in hebron and with absalom have gone two hundred men out of jerusalem invited ones and they are going in their simplicity and have not known anything and absalom sendeth ahithophel the gilonite a counsellor of david out of his city out of gillo in his sacrificing sacrifices and the conspiracy is strong and the people are going and increasing with absalom and he who is declaring tidings cometh in unto david saying the heart of the men of israel hath been after absalom and david saith to all his servants who are with him in jerusalem rise and we flee for we have no escape from the face of absalom haste to go lest he hasten and have overtaken us and forced on us evil and smitten the city by the mouth of the sword and the servants of the king say unto the king according to all that my lord the king chooseth lo thy servants do and the king goeth out and all his household at his feet and the king leaveth ten women concubines to keep the house and the king goeth out and all the people at his feet and they stand still at the farthest off house and all his servants are passing on at his side and all the carathite and all the pelathite and all the gittites six hundred men who came at his feet from gath are passing on at the front of the king and the king saith unto ittai the gittite why dost thou go thou also with us turn back and abide with the king for thou art a stranger and also an exile thou to thy place yesterday is thy coming in and to-day i move thee to go with us and i am going on that which i am going turn back and take back thy brethren with thee kindness and truth and ittai answereth the king and saith jehovah liveth and my lord the king liveth surely in the place where my lord the king is if for death if for life surely there is thy servant 
and david saith unto ittai go and pass over and ittai the gittite passeth over and all his men and all the infants who are with him and all the land are weeping a great voice and all the people are passing over and the king is passing over through the brook kidron and all the people are passing over on the front of the way of the wilderness and lo also zadok and all the levites with him bearing the ark of the covenant of god and they make the ark of god firm and abiathar goeth up till the completion of all the people to pass over out of the city and the king saith to zadok take back the ark of god to the city if i find grace in the eyes of jehovah then he hath brought me back and shown me it and his habitation and if thus he say i have not delighted in thee here am i he doth to me as is good in his eyes and the king saith unto zadok the priest art thou a seer turn back to the city in peace and ahimeaz thy son and jonathan son of abiathar your two sons with you see ye i am tarrying in the plains of the wilderness till the coming in of a word from you to declare to me and zadok taketh back and abiathar the ark of god to jerusalem and they abide there and david is going up in the ascent of the olives going up and weeping and he hath the head covered and he is going barefooted and all the people who are with him have covered each his head and have gone up going up and weeping and david declared saying ahithophel is among the conspirators with absalom and david saith make foolish i pray thee the counsel of ahithophel o jehovah and it cometh to pass david hath come unto the top where he boweth himself to god and lo to meet him is hushai the archite his coat rent and earth on his head and david saith to him if thou hast passed on with me then thou hast been on me for a burden and if to the city thou dost turn back and hast said to absalom thy servant i am o king servant of thy father i am also hitherto and now i am also thy servant then thou hast made void for me the counsel of ahithophel and are there not with thee there zadok and abiathar the priests and it hath been the whole of the matter that thou hearest from the house of the king thou dost declare to zadok and to abiathar the priests lo there with them are their two sons ahimeaz to zadok and jonathan to abiathar and ye have sent by their hand unto me anything that ye hear and hushai david's friend cometh in to the city and absalom cometh in to jerusalem chapter sixteen and david hath passed on a little from the top and lo zeba servant of mephibosheth to meet him and a couple of asses saddled and upon them two hundred loaves and a hundred bunches of raisins and a hundred of summer fruit and a bottle of wine and the king saith unto zeba what these to thee and zeba saith the asses for the household of the king to ride on and the bread and the summer fruit for the young men to eat and the wine for the wearied to drink in the wilderness and the king saith and where is the son of thy lord and zeba saith unto the king lo he is abiding in jerusalem for he said to-day to the house of israel give back to me the kingdom of my father and the king saith to zeba lo thine are all that mephibosheth hath and zeba saith i have bowed myself i find grace in thine eyes my lord o king and king david hath come in unto bahurim and lo thence a man is coming out of the family of the house of saul and his name is shimei son of gera he cometh out coming out and reviling and he stoneth david with stones and all the servants of king david and all the people and all the mighty men on his right and on his left and thus said shimei in his reviling go out go out o man of blood and man of worthlessness jehovah hath turned back on thee all the blood of the house of saul in whose stead thou hast reigned and jehovah doth give the kingdom into the hand of absalom thy son and lo thou art in thine evil for a man of blood thou art and abishai son of zeruiah saith unto the king why doth this dead dog revile my lord the king 
Let me pass over, I pray thee, and I turn aside his head. And the king saith, What? To me and to you, O sons of Zeruiah? For let him revile, even because Jehovah hath said to him, Revile David, and who saith, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David saith unto Abishai, and unto all his servants, Lo, my son who came out of my bowels is seeking my life, and also surely now the Benjamite. Leave him alone, and let him revile, for Jehovah hath said so to him. It may be Jehovah doth look on mine affliction, and Jehovah hath turned back to me good for his reviling this day. And David goeth with his men in the way, and Shimei is going at the side of the hill over against him, going on, and he revileth, and stoneth with stones over against him, and hath dusted with dust. And the king cometh in, and all the people who are with him, wearied, and they are refreshed there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, have come into Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. And it cometh to pass, when Hushai the archite, David's friend, hath come unto Absalom, that Hushai saith unto Absalom, Let the king live! Let the king live! And Absalom saith unto Hushai, This thy kindness with thy friend? Why hast thou not gone with thy friend? And Hushai saith unto Absalom, Nay, for he whom Jehovah hath chosen, and this people, even all the men of Israel, his I am, and with him I abide. And secondly, for whom do I labor? Is it not before his son? As I served before thy father, so am I before thee. And Absalom saith unto Ahithophel, Give for you counsel what we do. And Ahithophel saith unto Absalom, Go in unto the concubines of thy father, whom he left to keep the house. And all Israel hath heard that thou hast been abhorred by thy father, and the hands of all who are with thee have been strong. And they spread out for Absalom the tent on the roof, and Absalom goeth in unto the concubines of his father before the eyes of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel which he counseled in those days is as when one inquireth at the word of God, so is all the counsel of Ahithophel both to David and to Absalom. Chapter 17 And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me choose, I pray thee, twelve thousand men, and I arise and pursue after David to-night, and come upon him, and he wary and feeble-handed, and I have caused him to tremble, and all the people have fled who are with him, and I have smitten the king by himself and I bring back all the people unto thee, as the turning back of the whole is the man whom thou art seeking, all the people are peace. And the thing is right in the eyes of Absalom, and in the eyes of all the elders of Israel. And Absalom saith, Call, I pray thee, also for Hushai the archite, and we hear what is in his mouth, even he. And Hushai cometh in unto Absalom, and Absalom speaketh unto him, saying, According to this word hath Ahithophel spoken. Do we do his word? If not, thou, speak thou. And Hushai saith unto Absalom, Not good is the counsel that Ahithophel hath counseled at this time. And Hushai saith, Thou hast known thy father and his men, that they are heroes, and they are bitter in soul as a bereaved bear in a field, and thy father is a man of war, and doth not lodge with the people. Lo, now, he is hidden in one of the pits, or in one of the places, and it hath been at the falling among them at the commencement that the hearer hath heard, and said, There hath been a slaughter among the people who are after Absalom, and he also, the son of valor, whose heart is as the heart of the lion, doth utterly melt. For all Israel doth know that thy father is a hero, and sons of valor are those with him. So that I have counseled, let all Israel be diligently gathered unto thee, from Dan even unto Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and thou thyself art going in the midst. And we have come in unto him in one of the places where he is found, and we are upon him as the dew falleth on the ground, and there hath not been left of him, and of all the men who are with him, even one. And if unto a city he is gathered, then they have caused all Israel to bear unto that city ropes, and we have drawn it unto the brook, till that there hath not been found there even a stone. And Absalom saith, and all the men of Israel, 
better is the counsel of hushai the archite than the counsel of ahithophel and jehovah willed to make void the good counsel of ahithophel for the sake of jehovah's bringing unto absalom the evil and hushai saith unto zadok and unto abiathar the priests thus and thus hath ahithophel counselled absalom and the elders of israel and thus and thus i have counselled and now send hastily and declare to david saying lodge not to-night in the plains of the wilderness and also certainly pass over lest there be a swallowing up of the king and of all the people who are with him and jonathan and ahimaaz are standing at enrogel and the maidservant hath gone and declared to them and they go and have declared it to king david for they are not able to be seen to go into the city and a youth seeth them and declareth to absalom and they go on both of them hastily and come in unto the house of a man in bahurim and he hath a well in his court and they go down there and the woman taketh and spreadeth the covering over the face of the well and spreadeth on it the ground corn and the thing hath not been known and the servants of absalom come in unto the woman to the house and say where are ahimeaz and jonathan and the woman saith to them uh, they passed over the brook of water and they seek and have not found and turn back to jerusalem and it cometh to pass after their going on that they come up out of the well and go and declare to king david and say unto david rise ye and pass over hastily the waters for thus hath ahithophel counselled against you and david riseth and all the people who are with him and they pass over the jordan till the light of the morning till one hath not been lacking who hath not passed over the jordan and ahithophel hath seen that his counsel was not done and he saddleth the ass and riseth and goeth unto his house unto his city and giveth charge unto his household and strangleth himself and dieth and he is buried in the burying place of his father and david came to mahanaim and absalom passed over the jordan he and all the men of israel with him and amasa hath absalom set instead of joab over the host and amasa is a man's son whose name is ethra the israelite who hath gone in unto abigail daughter of nahash sister of zeruiah mother of joab and israel encampeth with absalom in the land of gilead and it cometh to pass at the coming in of david to mahanaim that shobi son of nahash from rabbah of the benai ammon and machir son of amiel from lodebar and barzillai the gileadite from rogalim couch and basin and earthen vessel and wheat and barley and flour and roasted corn and beans and lentils and roasted pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kine have brought nigh for david and for all the people who are with him to eat for they said thy people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness chapter eighteen and david inspecteth the people who are with him and setteth over them heads of thousands and heads of hundreds and david sendeth the third of the people by the hand of joab and the third by the hand of abishai son of zeruiah brother of joab and the third by the hand of ittai the gittite and the king saith unto the people i certainly go out i also with you and the people say thou dost not go out for if we utterly flee they do not set their heart upon us and if half of us die they do not set their heart unto us for now like us are ten thousand and now better that thou be to us from the city for an helper and the king saith to them that which is good in your eyes i do and the king standeth at the side of the gate and all the people have gone out by hundreds and by thousands and the king chargeth joab and abishai and ittai saying gently for me for the youth for absalom and all the people heard in the king's charging all the heads concerning absalom and the people goeth out into the field to meet israel and the battle is in a forest of ephraim and smitten there are the people of israel before the servants of david and the smiting there is great on that day twenty thousand and the battle is there scattered over the face of all the land and the forest multiplieth to devour among the people more than those whom the sword hath devoured in that day 
and absalom meeteth before the servants of david and absalom is riding on the mule and the mule cometh in under an entangled bough of the great oak and his head taketh hold on the oak and he is placed between the heavens and the earth and the mule that is under him hath passed on and one man seeth and declareth to joab and saith lo i saw absalom hanged in an oak and joab saith to the man who is declaring it to him and lo thou hast seen and wherefore didst thou not smite him there to the earth and on me to give to thee ten silverlings and one girdle and the man saith unto joab yea though i am weighing on my hand a thousand silverlings i do not put forth my hand unto the son of the king for in our ears hath the king charged thee and abishai and ittai saying observe ye who is against the youth against absalom or i had done against my soul a vain thing and no matter is hid from the king and thou thou dost station thyself over against and joab saith not right i tarry before thee and he taketh three darts in his hand and striketh them into the heart of absalom while he is alive in the midst of the yoke and they go round ten youths bearing weapons of joab and smite absalom and put him to death and joab bloweth with a trumpet and the people turneth back from pursuing after israel for joab hath kept back the people and they take absalom and cast him in the forest unto the great pit and set up over him a very great heap of stones and all israel have fled each to his tent and absalom hath taken and setteth up for himself in his life the standing pillar that is in the king's valley for he said i have no son to cause my name to be remembered and he calleth the standing pillar by his own name and it is called the monument of absalom unto this day and ahimeaz son of zadok said let me run i pray thee and i bear the king tidings for jehovah hath delivered him out of the hand of his enemies and joab saith to him thou art not a man of tidings this day but thou hast borne tidings on another day and this day thou dost not bear tidings because the king's son is dead and joab saith to cushai go declare to the king that which thou hast seen and cushai boweth himself to joab and runneth and ahimeaz son of zadok addeth again and saith unto joab and whatever it be let me run i pray thee i also after the cushite and joab saith why is this thou art running my son and for thee there are no tidings found and whatever it be said he let me run and he saith to him run and ahimeaz runneth the way of the circuit and passeth by the cushite and david is sitting between the two gates and the watchman goeth unto the roof of the gate unto the wall and lifteth up his eyes and looketh and lo a man running by himself and the watchman calleth and declareth to the king and the king saith if by himself tidings are in his mouth and he cometh coming on and drawing near and the watchman seeth another man running and the watchman calleth unto the gatekeeper and saith lo a man running by himself and the king saith also this one is bearing tidings and the watchman saith i see the running of the first as the running of ahimeaz son of zadok and the king saith this is a good man and with good tidings he cometh and ahimeaz calleth and saith unto the king peace and he boweth himself to the king on his face to the earth and saith blessed is jehovah thy god who hath shut up the men who lifted up their hand against my lord the king and the king saith peace to the youth to absalom and ahimeaz saith i saw the great multitude at the sending away of the servant of the king even thy servant by joab and i have not known what it is and the king saith turn round station thyself here and he turneth round and standeth still and lo the cushite hath come and the cushite saith let tidings be proclaimed my lord o king for jehovah hath delivered thee to-day out of the hand of all those rising up against thee and the king saith unto the cushite peace to the youth to absalom and the cushite saith let them be as the youth the enemies of my lord the king 
and all who have risen up against thee for evil. And the king trembleth, and goeth up on the upper chamber of the gate, and weepeth. And thus he hath said in his going, My son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom. <laughs> oh, that I had died for thee, Absalom, my son, my son. <laughs> The end of chapters 13 through 18. Recording by Mark Penfold.